I'm hoping the, that last rather long kind of involved example I didn't lose you too much. In this video I want to do another example, probably a little simpler. In fact, maybe I should have started with this example. But anyway, um, let's say static uh, I enumerable. And I also, I said you can do I enumerable of whatever type you want to do as the generic argument. Um, you can also do I enumerator, all right? The compiler, the compiler um, recognizes both I enumerable and I enumerator for these things that Microsoft and the MSDN call iterator blocks. And I guess they call them iterator blocks because we iterate through these things, but I rarely hear the terminology outside of MSDN. I think the MSDN is written by people that probably couldn't get jobs doing the real stuff. So anyway, sorry for some personal opinion there. Okay, I enumerable, I enumerator of int, and I can do this with methods and with properties. So let me just show you I can do it with a property. Um, let's just call this property numbers. Get. And um, let's yield return. Uh, well, I can do my own random numbers. Three and uh, five, and we'll do one. All right, so for each and I in numbers, Console right line I. Okay, so run this and hopefully for each statement cannot operate on I enumerator. Oh, of course it can't. <laughs> I should know that. Uh, only to have lectured on for each. Okay, I want to show you that build succeeded with I enumerator here. But in order to make the for each happy, I have to say I enumerable. Okay, so now I can bring the for each back in run it and we should see the output 351 which we do okay so I think this example might be a little easier to desugarize but just to make it more interesting I'm gonna console right line begin All right and uh, console right line yielding three I'm going to interlace these print statements here so that we can better observe uh, what's going on. Um, this is end. All right, so let's run this. Actually, okay, so notice I have right line out here, and then I have a bunch of right lines in here. If I run this, you see we have begin, yielding three, and then main prints three, and then we yield five, and then main prints five, and then we yield one, and all these yielding statements are coming from the the property I called numbers, and um, yielding one, one, and then we hit end. Notice, even after the last yield return one, the iterator block still returned. It, it came back to to uh, print this end, even though there was nothing else to yield. Um, that's actually rather important that it prints this end. Theoretically, if we're connecting to a database or something, it's important that we get a chance to close our connections and things, even though we're not actually yielding anything from that iteration. So anyway, let's desugarize this example. Hopefully it's a little easier than the last one, but maybe not. Um, I'm actually going to, just because these things get a little bit, if I remember the hotkey, control shift comma, just because they get a little bit more involved, I'm going to reduce the font size here. Um, that's control shift comma to make it smaller and period to make it bigger. That's actually just zooming in and zooming out. Um, and then also make sure you turn the YouTube video up to HD because now that it's small you should, you should be able to see more but you need to get higher quality. Okay, so let's do the translation. Um, or desugarizing class numbers e let's call it hybrid because it's enumerable I enumerable of int and I enumerator of int and let's tell Visual Studio again I'm just control dot enter control dot enter and get rid of these things just because I like to clean this up I, I honestly think too much syntax is something I have to read and interpret and it's just noise in my face so I try to reduce it as much as possible since I have to look at syntax all day long. Uh, let's see, reset, again, useless, control MM, collapse it, leave it unimplemented. Uh, current down here, we'll just say return uh, current, which is going to actually defer execution or, 
or delegate it over to this generic version of current. So we want to implement the current and dispose. Dispose is going to do nothing. Remember that for each actually uh, calls dispose for us. I'm going to remove it down here, or not remove it, but put it down here. Uh, move next is the important method, so let's bring it up right in our face. And and then this, so we don't need to see this anymore, so get rid of that. Uh, bring that up, move next, and then return. So get numerator, again, I'm just going to return this because this is the enumerator. Uh, and then down here I'm going to defer, I could say return this again, but honestly even though it's one line of code, we're kind of duping logic here, or duplicating logic. So I'm just going to defer or delegate uh, execution over to the original implementation right here. Very, that's, that's, I think that's a professional thing to do as a, as an engineer. Okay, okay, so collapse both of these. And, uh, I'm going to move them down to the bottom because I'm not interested in them anymore. The interesting part is the move next and the current. And so here we go. Alright, so we have all these yield returns now. And in the previous videos I didn't do multiple yield returns, but you can. In fact, I could drop a for loop in here that yield returned inside of that with all these other just random yield returns. And I hard-coded three, but I could do, I could pull a number from a database if I wanted to, or I, I could ran.next. Again, it's really up to me, but anyway, I'm going to copy all this code. I'm actually going to cut it, and we're going to move it into the move next. All right, and um, basically every yield return needs to turn into a case statement in our switch. So remember we had this um, int state, and I'm not going to initialize it. I could initialize it to zero, but if I leave it uninitialized, uh, .NET will set it to zero for me. And, uh, I, I think it's more professional to know what the language is going to do, so I, I rely on that heavily. Um, and then let's just say uh, case or switch, sorry, switch state, and this is going to be case zero, and we're going to print some stuff, and then we can't say yield return anymore. We need to say current gets three. I'm going to do lowercase current. I guess I could do a private set, but I'm not going to do that. Let's just int current right here. So current gets three. And since that was our yield return, I need to uh, say state gets one because I want it to jump to the next state. Next time we, we or the person calling move next, the next time they call move next, it needs to jump to right here. Okay, so when I say move next, we run these three, these two lines, these print lines, and then we say yield return three, which is current gets three for us, and then keep track where we're at, break, and then we're out. All right, well, the next time they call move next, uh, we're right here at one. So case one, um, we're going to do yet another print statement. Let's see if I can indent this a little bit, just to make it more readable. Uh, break. Okay, so case one, we're going to do the next print statement. And then, oh, look, here's yield return five. Well, that means we can't yield return anymore. It's our current. So our current gets five. And state gets two. And then break again. I guess I'll, I'll end it in these breaks. Uh, let me line this up as well. And then right here, though, well, this is going to be our, our state for two. Remember we said we're leaving off here. So next time you come back in here, let's jump to two. So, in two, we're going to do yet another print here. And instead of yield return one, we're going to say current gets one. Then we're going to say state gets, uh, I guess I could say, yeah, I should say three. Maintain, again, keep track of where we're at. And then uh, break. And then right here, case three. Again, this is the cleanup case. We're not actually going, notice there's no yield return here, but we still need to, print this end, so we're going to do that, but then right here we're going to say return false, meaning no more elements. Alright, and so there's our whole switch statement. I, I pulled apart that, that all the, those three yield returns in the console write lines and translated them just like the compiler would into case statements. And then down here I'm just going to say return true. If I, get, if I get here, I know that there's another element, and so we can move on. 
Okay, so we still yield return 3, yield return 5, yield return 1. And then these state, the state variable can helps us keep track of where we're at in the move next. So current, again, just like the last video, return little current. All right. Whew. A lot of code. Let's run it. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we need a, we need a, <laughs> this is where we pulled the code out of. So we need to return new, what did I call that class? I called it numbers hybrid. Okay. So numbers hybrid, control minus, control minus to jump to where we were. Uh, return new, numbers hybrid. Okay, control F5, I'm just going to run it. And look at this. Output's the same. Okay, now, the way I work the code isn't identical to what the compiler does. There's some other stuff going on, but for the most part, that's like 85, 90% of it is what we did. Okay, so, so there you go. Yeah, hopefully... Uh, Understand yield return a little bit better, and how the compiler, it's sugar to the compiler, and it saves us a lot of headache and, and that kind of thing. Um, I do want to point out something I didn't show in the last video. F10, F10. Uh, actually, you know what? Instead of using for each, I'm going to desugarize the for each. I'm going to say enumerator of int source gets numbers, all right? And remember, when I read a property here, like I'm doing, I'm saying, uh, assignment here, and then why is it complaining? Oh, sorry, cannot implicitly clear generic I enum. Oh, so yeah, of course it's I enumerable, not I enumerator. Uh, when I invoke this property as such, it, it executes this code here. But notice, now that I've done the work of the compiler, there's no there's no console write lines in here. It's just a new. So executing this this property actually won't print. Any output, all right? So not until I say, okay, I enumerator of int, and I'll call it rater, gets source dot get enumerator, which is kind of funny because it just returns itself, but wrapped up or masked behind the interfaces, we don't know that. Uh, and then I'm just going to say wall rater dot move next, console write line rater dot current. Okay, that's that's roughly the syntactic sugar that the compiler unwraps a for each two. So watch this F10, F10. Okay, I'm gonna step over numbers. Notice no output, no output. Um, when I say get numerator, that's still not gonna give us any output because it just returned. If you remember, oh, where's get numerator? Right here. It just returned itself. We still haven't started this this iterating machine, all right? The the machine, the logic for the machine, which is with all the uh, console write lines and stuff, the logic, oopsie, is in the move next. The move next is really the, the guts and the, the the grinding of this machine, all right? Not until we call move next do things really get interesting. So let's go back to where we were. I say while raider dot move next. Well, F11, switch state. Remember, state initializes the zero by default in C sharp dot net. Uh, we do these two prints. Yield return 3 or store 3 because when you call current, which we do right here, we want to uh, return currents. Let's go to our output window here and we see begin yielding 3 and so on and so forth. But but that that output doesn't really uh, happen until we, we walk through this thing one by one. And you can see that the yielding statements from our enumerator block are interlaced with the right lines here in main. Um, just to just kind of prove that, that that's actually the case, I'm going to use some epic source control here and undo. <laughs> undo all the way to the original. Uh, okay, don't blink. I'm going to pause it. So now I'm back to the original example. I have I enumerable here with yield returns. And I'm just going to say, um, I'll just comment out the for each for now. I'm going to say I enumerable of int source gets numbers just like it barely did and I, I want to prove to you that it looks like we would we'd print these va these statements out but again we're not going to because this gets translated into just return a new instance of the compiler generated class so control f5 run it notice no output okay anyway so I don't know if that was a simpler example or not example or not I hope I hope it was but the video turned out to be just as long as the last one so or, or maybe a minute or two shy.